Okay. Let me know when it goes live for you. Um, I will hop over to Photoshop uh, while we wait for it to load up. Mm -hmm. I'm sad for it's on there. Oh yeah, earn a million dollars. Uh, oh, nice. Hello. Okay. Hi, everybody. We're a tiny bit early. Um, and so I thought we could just <coughs> cough a little bit. Um, no, that's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> Coughing's natural. Um, I thought I could just say hi while we wait for people to sort of filter in and start at the official time. Um, and yeah. Uh, so I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Um, we've got Cabman, uh, 8958, Colby Monroe. And uh, Dertinus commented a while back. I don't know if they're watching or not. Oh, no. Uh, was that the six hours <laughs> yes. ahead thing? Yeah. Oh, Someone, dear. Hmm. <laughs> the six hours early. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's dedication. Um, but yeah, no. Hello, everybody. It's lovely to see you all. Um, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. It's absolutely molten outside today. Uh, Scotland is uncharacteristically hot. Usually we get like um, two really sunny weeks and then like a, a month of kind of, eh, it's all right. Um, but uh, we are absolutely boiling out here and uh, which is why I'm in a vest. I'm not usually in vests. It's not usually my kind of deal, but wearing anything else right now um, is horrible for me. Uh, so <laughs> we're just gonna have to suffer through. Um, but I hope it's, it's nice and sunny where you are. It's probably embarrassingly uh, cool here in terms of temperature uh, in that I find it very very hot but those of you in the states are probably like ha huh, that is a poultry poultry summer heat yeah I um, mean I think it's about 24 but for reference Scotland goes what's called taps off it's about oh, yeah. 16 degrees so. as soon as there's the slightest ounce of sunshine um, let's see um, we've got York in as well Google what's the oh. temperature right now sorry the temperature in Linlithgow right now is 25 degrees. Um, 25. 25, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. Yeah, what's 25 in Fahrenheit? Um, so... Uh, a says, it's another day of classes until 5.30pm um, in the States. That is. 77 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever that is. I've heard that some Americans actually put their like AC to 70. Like that's oh, an this ideal is temperature. Like temperature. Yeah, this is like room temperature oh, to them, I think. Um, but yes, hello Yorick and hello everybody else. And we've got um, 14SRV in. This is Hey Dude, how's it going? Very good, thank you. I hope um, it's going well for you too. And Colby is liking your vest. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I feel, I don't know, it feels very out of character, but I like it. It's very comfortable. Um, so. <laughs> oh, Peeper Majeepers joined us as well. Lovely. Okay. It's all good. Well, it's officially start time for the stream now. Um, so I think we can actually get started. Um, so the tone of the stream is going to be um, that of, as the, the, the title and, and various social media posts suggests, it's going to be trying to make something really beautiful. Um, now, I've put on the screen the definition of beauty. Um, Something elegant, ideal, fascinating, graceful, symmetrical, magnificent, well-formed, grand, bewitching, and so on. Um, and unfortunately, I can't do a self-portrait, clearly, um, because it has to be a monster in D&D. &D. Uh, no, I'm just messing. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I, there's kind of a, a, a trope around my own uh, artwork of making horrible flesh monstr monstrosities, which you know I love to do. I love doing way too many unnecessary lines and things and making things really grotesque and horrible. Um, and in last month's stream, we made a fey creature that was pretty beautiful, but it was still kind of pretty insectoid. And, you know, I managed to gross it up a little bit. You know, it's still very pretty, it's still very nice, but I want to make something unironically beautiful today. And as a further caveat, I don't want to draw a person, I don't want to draw a humanoid. I want to make a thing that's beautiful, like in the way that tigers are beautiful, in the way that a galloping horse is beautiful. And I want to put that in D&D &D as something that we can all enjoy, um, unironically, ideally. Um, and I'll be taking your suggestions for ideas and stuff like that in just a second. Um, you know, we'll start by sort of picking a creature type, but otherwise, 
Um, there's a 30 second delay, so just be patient with your suggestions and ideas uh, between when you write it and when we actually get to see it. Um, uh, and we'll be trying to make something beautiful with your ideas. But first, um, the Arcane Forge, uh, for those of you who have not seen any of my videos before, hi, my name's Josh, this is the Arcane Forge, I probably should have led with that first. Um, I do uh, illustration content and I talk about lore and mythology and real world stuff and in the background my dog Myrtle likes to snore. Um, my, my wife Yvonne will be reading out your comments as we go because I can't see what you're writing uh, while we're going ahead. Um, and yeah, we're going to make something really nerdy for Dungeons and Dragons today. But all of this stuff, all of the stuff that I get to do, um, is very kindly supported by the people on Patreon, my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. Um, so I would like to do a little shout out to them uh, if you'll indulge me uh, and say thank you for letting me get through another month of living and doing cool stuff and doing just the coolest job in the world and getting to illustrate monsters with you guys. So... Um, rather than having them on my phone this time, I have everybody up here. So we have, uh, this month, you guys were Janessa, Grant Train, Luke Kamak, Rory Gladsk Gladstone, even, Tamling, uh, Oliver Thorvald Mellock, AJ, Dominique Jolly, Max Copeland, Aldrin, Christian Palmer-Smith, Matthew Anderson, Nicholas Brown, uh, Ryan, you know what, Ryan Von Agir, there's two names there. One is far more easy to pronounce. Um, Ragnar Bearson, uh, Matt Lichenwalner, uh, Jacob Riesler. Oh my God, Myrtle's really going for it in the background. Um, Rose Selavy, Jared Moore, Damien, Daniel Williams, Bronwyn Haller, Megan Myrick, Doombot9, Inquisitor Thomas, uh, Yuda Jorge, uh, Dean Root, Denny Scalf, Bootsy, uh, Max... Copeland, we've already said Max Copeland. I've duplicated some of these. Um, Nicholas Brown has already been done. Micah, um, Peter Balf, Max Schluter, Ryan H, Steve Harrison, Tim Klemer, Dan Waterman, Styrax, Colby Monroe, who's in the comments. Uh, it's just Avi, Sam Hickson, Brandon Kerr, Darth Katana, Trevor Traub, Yorick Beast, also in the comments, um, Nat in Camo, Nicholas Bayer, Ethan Dibby, Skyrush Soul, Nathan Stratton, Amanda and Jake Westfall, uh, Braxton Hudson, Halfy Wolf, uh, Nicholas G. Silver, Raptor Dio, Jelly Pig, Duck Quack, Brandon Wilkinson, Jonathan Foster, Benjamin Colburn, I think I might have duplicated some of these as well, Bootsy, you have definitely not been said yet, Bootsy, Rappletech, um, have I said... Inquisitor Thomas, I have said Inquisitor Thomas, Doombot9, I think I've said as well, I think that's us. So yeah, thank you so much everyone on Patreon, you're all wonderful, and thank you so much for letting me do this amazing, amazing work, and have a very snorry dog that likes to interrupt me while I'm trying to read things out. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have a couple of suggestions. Oh nice, okay. Uh, M14SRB says, uh, beautiful like an arcane flower that knows identify. Ooh. Um, Colby Monroe says if we're going for beautiful I think a lot of boys had a very specific reaction to the drawings of the nymphs and various monster manuals over the years mm -hmm. uh, we're not going for sexy we're going for beautiful I think that's a serious caveat okay. uh, <laughs> uh, York says oh so that's why giants aren't on the list but <laughs> Colby says a beautiful giant I'm with you 100% mm -hmm. Uh M14 says uh, beautiful ooze. Beautiful so ooze, an yeah. Alternative version takes on yeah. ooze. Uh, can, I could do a beautiful it. ooze very easily. Uh, I like the, the idea of a giant who's a paragon of humanesque physicality and beauty, says Colby. Um, thinking something celestial. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Aldrin just joined in time to hear his name being said. Uh, dragon celestial. Ooh. A half giant, half celestial. Wait, <laughs> Josh has arms out. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I have, have real arms. It's so, it's so boiling, and I'm not equipped to deal with the heat at all. So you're going to have to suffer through me wearing a, a vest. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Any other suggestions so far of beautiful that's, things? That's where we're at. Okay. If, uh, guys, if you want to jump in with a few more ideas, we'll give it a few minutes. Yeah. Like, 
Um, so I think sometimes we, we jump ahead. And yeah, we start some doing something and then some really awesome ideas kind of filter in. I really like a lot of these already, actually, I have to say. An arcane flower, definitely, um, that's tapping into my kind of love of elven things. I could definitely do something with that. A beautiful ooze. I initially didn't wasn't going to put ooze and aberration on the list. Aberration, um, purely because I thought someone would say aberration, then we could say uh, beauty, like beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Uh -huh. So I just put that for a pun. Um, but oozes, you could very easily do like a kind of cosmic ooze with all these kind of like star patterns and kind of constellations inside. Maybe it like forms certain constellations uh, and like you know shoots. Uh, magic missiles or something along those lines. Um, beautiful giant. I haven't put giant down because I wasn't intending to do a humanoid creature. I could be convinced to do that, but I really want to separate the idea of beauty from being sexually attractive, like physically attractive person, uh, to like something that is beautiful in the way that, you know, uh, sunset is beautiful, uh, you know, an animal in its natural habitat is beautiful, um, elegant and aesthetically pleasing without being something that uh, teenage boys would love to find in early editions of D&D, basically, um, is what I'm going for. So no succubi, because they're not beautiful. They are, you know, a whole host of things, but, but beauty's not among them. Um, cool. So we have um, Aces, Celestial Plants. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the Impusa? From Greek mythology. Mm. Uh, how is that spelled? E M P U S A. Uh, ice elementals that could mm. be quite beautiful. Very much. Um, or combo elementals like fire and ice that could be quite interesting. See how you cope with the midpoint between fire and ice. Yeah. Um, oh, Myrtle, who's got. Uh, Myrtle's snap budget has came in from oh, Thank you very thank much. Thank you very Sanders. much. That's very kind of you. Uh, golden dragon form. Mm. Ooh, nice. Or dragon fae, if you want to hop back to fae. Mm -hmm. uh, Aldrin's correcting himself like mid sentence. Beautiful werewolf. No, wait. Beautiful werewolf will go into dangerous territory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're straying dangerously close oh, to fairyland. Trashy worm has said this and I feel like this is very you actually mm -hmm. a beautiful construct with a constructed porcelain face oh now that really is like very much my kind of cog things yeah um, um, Alden is breaking out the monster manual oh right uh, York says what about a Quetzal Quetzal Hippogriff ooh Hippo yeah Hippo Quetzal Quetzal yeah um, I'm not sure what that one is um, if the sunset is beautiful <laughs> Is a nuclear explosion um, for Tina? Uh, yeah, I think that would be considered beautiful. Um, it's beautiful in a very destructive way, but that doesn't mean it's not beautiful uh, for the few moments that you can still see things. Um, Golden pheasant griffin. Ooh. Um, a pitch for an ooze plant hybrid, prismatic ooze that causes flowers and plant life to grow. Colby, that's oh, pretty cool, man. Uh, Fever Reggie persists. If you've still got the swamp of possibility, um, some conjurer thought of something so beautiful that it physically manifested. That mm. could be a good bit of background. That's really cool. Future. A terrace. Um, <laughs> um, Prismatic. <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to keep up with notes. Plant um, growing. Oops, sorry. Ooze is where I'm at. Um, terrace. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say maybe not terrace mm. um, because... You don't want to have to wear brown trousers when something beautiful is turning up, uh, but you definitely would have to wear brown trousers if uh, Tarask showed up. Oh. <laughs> um, Zachary Richards says, a giant island-sized turtles with a Bob Ross-style landscape oh, on his back. Oh, you're uh, talking to me. Yeah, yes. Uh, York says, a prehistoric animal-themed chimera. Chimera. Uh, lovely. Uh, island-sized turtle with Bob... Ross on back just Bob Ross uh, not even a Bob Ross painting just Bob he Ross he is a beautiful yeah. creature he's a mythical creature okay. um, and then we I had mean, uh, prehistoric I think we've got a lot going on there yeah unless there's a couple of last minute ones if anyone wants to throw in but 
Um, mm-hmm. Or are you feeling you feel like you've got enough going on there, there? So there's, yeah, there's a lot here that I really like the idea of. There's some really cool kind of griffin-like things. I think like to subcategorize, we've got kind of griffins, which is kind of our monstrosity camp. Uh, we've got some, we've got a couple of really nice sounding oozes. Um, and it looks like we've got some elementals and some draconic creatures. Yeah. Um, um, I really like the idea of the construct as well, although I'm not sure that that was a hugely popular concept. It was something that I really liked. Um, um, there's also a suggestion that the turtle dragon would work well for an island sized terrain piece. Yes, for sure. Um, I've definitely I've drawn a dragon turtle before, and it was not my prettiest creation, but it was a nice one. Uh, okay. uh, Steve's so. joined us so hi Steve thank hi you. Steve nice um, to see you Aldrin says beautiful animated armour so okay. armour that's a bit of a life of its own that's mm. pretty cool um, a panting mimic or oh, a painting mimic oh, that yeah. makes sense yeah, yeah. Um, um, non-human genasi would be nice to explore like kenku genasi or something like that Perhaps yeah. you could challenge yourself and make a beautiful hill giant. <laughs> um, was that Yorick? Of course. <laughs> um, of course it is. Uh, chromatic dragons, making chromatic dragons beautiful. Mm. Clay golem doesn't have to be ugly, that's true. No, that's very true. But we are, we're, you guys are very much trying to cheat here. I said not humanoid. And there's a lot of just like, well, it could be a painting mimic. There's a painting of a human uh, or a, <laughs> a clay sculpture. Sculpture of a human? Uh-huh. I want to you. Right. We're trying to stay away from humanoid things as much as possible. Unless, am I just thoroughly outvoted here? Do you reckon we, Yvonne, you yeah. personally, do you reckon we should do a humanoid thing? Should I allow humanoid Ooh, things? I think there's plenty of calls for, um, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of dragon based things here. Yeah, I think we can make a very beautiful dragon. So, our, our fire dragon. Yorick yeah, yeah. Let's just throw that out there. <laughs> Yorick, you're cheating and, uh, and you know it as well. Don't be cheeky with me. Right. Okay, so I think we've got, I think we've got dragons of one kind or another, and we can kind of niche down. Um, we've got griffins. Because it's a giant, like, land size. Yeah, terrain. titans, we'll call it titans. Um, uh, what else we've got? Which I think I'll, I'll count the elementals within titans, because we've got some cool elemental ideas as well. Uh, Steve says, uh, Kuatl? Oh, Kuatls, yeah, I've, I've, but I've drawn a Kuatl before. I think, like, I've done a Monster Monday on them. I'm trying to draw, ideally, something that we'll create together. Um, oh, Talon says, wear elk, the most beautiful creature. I do like elk. Wear elk, elk. elk. That yeah. is, that's pretty damn cool. Um, if we're going dragon, can we do an eastern dragon? I think that would be really cool. That so sounds like a cool idea, oh, actually. Uh, um, no humanoid, so all beautiful all elk are beautiful very true um <laughs> oh apocalyptic moth has just joined us hello i <laughs> uh, don't forget fate and celestial says p for my jeeper very true very true um apocalyptic moth suggests another moth ah. beautiful mind flares is moonring bird of paradise themed rock Ooh. that's quite cool that's true yeah okay okay the el- elk is gaining popularity here <laughs> Not the most graceful of creatures, but like there is something quite stately about them. Um, yeah, that's true. Let me let me have a look at. Um, I mean, I thought they were just the size of like a the deer that we get over here until mm. I saw a skeleton oh, no. in a museum. It was alarmingly like uh, Eastern dragons are so underrated in D and D. Maybe with a tooth halo. Ooh. Oh, hang on, wait. Sorry, um, I've missed this comment. Apocalypse an aberration who is horrifyingly beautiful, <laughs> maybe with a tooth halo. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, giant elks were supposed to be gorgeous. A majestic Sasquatch. A majestic Sasquatch. Okay, I could. So, okay, I will. I will it could put... have his hair and braids. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, what am I going to call the kind of like wear creatures and. Uh, Sasquatches and other things of that nature. We can call them uh, mutants for now. Um, Okay. So. So, so, so. Um, I'm I'm broadly 
cutting our categories down to mutants of one kind or another, dragons, griffins, titans, and oozes. Um, is there a way that we can kind of get, we can feel out a majority of what people would like um, based on that? What should we go for? So hot. Sorry, I'm reading the comments. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of want to know uh, out of the categories of our kind of mutant based oh, things, right. our dragons, our griffins, our titans, and our oozes, I want to find one that we want to niche down into cool. and keep exploring. If you could just do one word answers for us, guys. Unfortunately, yeah. you can't do a poll because. Yeah, that, like, I can't. Oh, you know what? Uh, I can. Right. Uh, it might just be a bit disruptive, but I'm hoping you'll be able to see the poll as well. Um, so let's do, um, I can do it here, sorry for being able to see behind the screen, but, uh, um, oh, Kelpie, actually, that's it. Oh, that is cool. Okay, right, hang on, I need to go uh, back, you hear it right. It's all good. Um, right, what have we got? We've got dragons. Oozes, uh, add an option, where are the rest of you? Oh, a straw poll link, yeah, that's true, I could have just uh, yeah, that's a that's a good idea. Griffins, Titans, and Mutants, Griffins, Titans, Mutants. Sorry, I'm doing it now, but we can do it next time. Uh, Griffins, Titans, Oh, I can't do another option on top of that. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Right. Griffins and mutants have been merged together into one category, but that's. Can I just read out a few additional ones, and you can see whether they fit into it or not? Yeah. Are you able to see a poll on the screen right now? Of interest, is that uh, coming up? It's kind of off the side a little bit, like. Are they able to see it though? Like, does it come up in your comment section? We've never done. Oh, it's there now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. So. So what yeah. about Kelpie, um, dragons? Oh, the polls just came right up over some of the comments people have made. I don't know quite. That's really unfortunate. Uh, close poll. Okay. Oh. Uh, I'm waiting to refresh my page then because that's. Sorry, no worries. We're still working this out, to be honest, <laughs> um, as you can no doubt tell. There is a thing, someone's in Kelpie. Oh, this is going to be annoying. It's, uh, I'd love to see dragons, mm -hmm. um, hip griffins and hippogriffs. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye out for an upcoming video. Yeah, there's an upcoming Monster Monday to that effect. Um, okay, I'm kind of stuck with the polls. I can't read anyone's comments okay. there until. Let me see if I can see more poll stuff. Um, uh, is no. it just showing me the one that's in the lead? Because I've got oozes at 29%. Do I get to see more? Okay. Oh, no, no. They're all rough. <laughs> frustratingly, all roughly at about the same oh, really? deal. Oh. Yeah. Who's in the lead? Uh, we've got oozes, griffins, and other mutants, and titans and elementals all at the same time um, with dragons at 14% I thought dragons were going to be much higher than that actually but I'm very happy to go with whatever works um, um, I'd like to see how strange the idea oh no, I like the idea of how strange a beautiful ooze would be yep. um, oh Steve's having issues with his autocorrect oh, and sorry, actually Tom. see what you've written now Steve so it's, it's all good um I, I was talking to the uh, there's a, a hairdresser um, who I just started going to, and uh, I was talking to him about my um, uh, terrible issues with autocorrect, like being horrifically dyslexic and uh, having chubby thumbs. And uh, so autocorrect comes up with all sorts, and uh, we, we just got chatting. And apparently, his worst blunder with autocorrect was saying to someone that he had just met that they had an appointment at six. Um, like, do you, do you want to get your, uh, I can't remember what he said exactly, but obviously uh, six is only one letter away from something that would be very oh. inappropriate for a hairdresser to message someone about. Uh, so, oh, no. <laughs> so it could be worse. Uh, it could be worse. Mm. I was listening to um, uh, a podcast that was covering this, 
a scandal around our previous Prime Minister David Cameron mm-hmm. and his text messages and apparently he thought law meant lots of love so he wrote like things like sorry your horse died law <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> I mean he was a Tory so I mean <laughs> <laughs> okay um, um fuck, I'll read you what I can see right Apocalypse mm. says I ran a game for a completely new player yesterday she chose to play Ezzy the Tooth Fairy oh pretty um, cool uh, I guess we could combine them all. I think this is because it, you mentioned it's tight. Yeah, it's it getting very tight. Mon t- Griffin says Aldrin. Um, I'm campaigning for Uzis. A vote for Uzis is a vote for everyone. Yeah, well, so it's actually pretty close between Uzis and Griffins and other mutants. Um, so why don't I, one more time, niche down mm-hmm. out of those two and we get a winner out of. Uh, those two. So, mm-hmm. can I do another poll? You just uh, missed that one, so I can read Yeah, that away. should be done now. Uh, do I only get oh. to do one poll? Oh, no, okay, I can do another one. Um, oh, right, okay, so it needs to tell me the kind of uh, general answer there. So, oozes versus. Okay, there we go. So there should be a new poll now that's just gone up, or it should just be about to go up. Um, that will be deciding between griffins, mutants, and oozes, basically. Okay, um, so basically Aldrin and Colby are going to have a fist fight to settle it. So <laughs> Give them some time. Let yeah. us know. When you guys finish battling it out, just let me know. Um, is there like an online arm wrestling simulator? <laughs> you, could use? you guys both get on Super Smash Brothers and uh, just duke it out. Okay. Right. This is this is really di- dividing people into. Oh my god. Are you Do team, I need to... team Ooze or Team Griffin? Uh, me? Um, no, I just mean in general. Right, okay, okay, good. Don't the, bias the vote. No, I was going to say the whole point of the vote is so that I don't have to decide out. anything. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to get my brushes ready though for when we have a decision. Uh, people are my jeepers. Is, uh, your celestial oozes could be cool, like celestial nebula space. Like yeah, ooze, I do really cool. like the idea of a celestial sort of space ooze. I feel like you could get some interesting brushes. You could maybe get some of your different textured brushes on mm. the go for that. Maybe some watercolor yeah, effects or something. Definitely, that would be very, very nice. And, I mean, to be fair as well, um, we've not really had... There's a, usually a lot of call cool in these for like transparent creatures or semi-transparent creatures with lots of really complicated stuff going on the inside, um, which I usually go, no, we've not got enough time for that. But for a kind of nebulous, uh, squidgy shape of a ooze, uh, you know, we could probably could probably get that done in the time, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, cool. It says I will personally Venmo anyone, everyone who votes oozes a hundred dollars. <laughs> And Steve says, keep your dirty is my Colby. I want to see feathers. <laughs> Team Bird Mammal used abominations. Oh my god. Uh, Nebula is <laughs> That shit is a great idea. Props never thought of that. Ooze feathers. <laughs> oh my god, no, not ooze feathers. Steve knows what's up. Go home. We're not doing ooze feathers. Ooze, oozes are in the lead by the looks of it, I think. Uh, let me just look here. A celestial space ooze. A booze user. <laughs> Joe. Uh, no, Joe. No. It's too much fusion. Um, I think oozes are winning there. We've got 56% for oozes and we've got oh, 44%. It's tight. It is tight. It's I, tight. Okay, right. I tell you what. This is this is very, very heated. You've got to cut it off at some point. You've got to cut it off. It's 59. It's 59% ooze. Okay, let's well, see. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've we'll got we've got to do got to do oozes, guys. Got to take the oozes when they come. Uh, um, you can have a Stellar nursery with the creature itself to add to the beauty of it. Oh, I mean that. I mean you could do a stellar nursery inside a ooze. Um, yeah. fal- false hydra that has survived of eating only griffins and oozes with Zachary Richards. That seems like a very intentionally not beautiful thing. Um, but <laughs> I like I like where your head oh, went to. And then uh, people are my deeper. So this is uh, 
Uh, good point. Hey guys, don't forget to like the video. It's only at 10. We've got 22 people in here. Oh, that would Thank be very kind of you. Yes, that please. would really help. Yeah, and also just makes me very happy. Um, but yeah, let's, I very rarely get to draw an ooze. I think mm -hmm. oozes have, have won here. This um, is a dark day for griffins. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. There could Maybe there'll be time for a griffin if an ooze is very quick. I like quick. this. Um, Jack McFadden Finlayson says, an ooze eats space stuff like a living black mm, hole. That's very cool. I like that a lot. Oh, it's working. The likes are ticking up now. Oh, thank We're you very much. Thank you, people. That's very, very kind of you. Uh, York says, insert Darth Vader episode 3. No! <laughs> <laughs> um, My fellow Griffin supporters, we've lost this battle, but the war is not over. You'll get so many. <laughs> <We let ooze>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! I can't believe we started a. a Who knew there was such passion for us? A, <laughs> that's honest, that's a soundbite of the one episode. One of the best characters we've had in oh, game yeah, no, was good. sentient ooze. That was really good. Right, our friend James played for a while. He just it was very good. Mm -hmm. I was very impressed by that. Um, okay, okay, okay. Um, let me have a think here about. <laughs> I need to get like some, I'm trying to find some little star pictures here so I'm not just making things up off the top of my head. Um, uh, what am I looking for? Um, okay, yeah, okay. Um, so, prepare to be astounded by a beautiful ooze uh, is a sentence I never thought I'd say. But, uh, we're going to, we're going to do that. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I want you guys to uh, come up with what this thing might be able to do, um, how it might live, what kind of level of sentience it might have, um, things of that nature. Because I am thinking... Well, Bobby Monroe says, I am victorious. I'd like to thank everyone who made this possible. Let's not look down on Team Griffins. They put up an admiral race. <laughs> Even we must win with grace. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Steve says, I'm going to suggest oozes in the next Monday. Monday, Monday? <laughs> Monster Monday and vote for it on Patreon now. There's not many. Ooze October is a new Dragon December. Oh, there's so many, yeah. Yeah. There are absolutely tons. I was going to draw like a little... However, as it is campaign manager, I must now resign because I embezzled the funds and cannot Venmo the $100 <laughs> to each of you. <laughs> oh my god. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, <laughs> uh, people are my deeper... Yeah, um, we are going Celestial Ooze. Yeah. So what can a celestial ooze do? I'm not liking having a little face on the ooze. To be honest, I just want to do star stuff inside an ooze. Um, maybe we could do like a little slammy arm type appendage. Okay, it says, I'm getting some, bear with me here, getting some Nabstablook eyes from just the outline. I don't even know what no, that is. I might be butchering it. Nav stab look. Okay. <laughs> it's new to me. Spell it out phonetically. For me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it lives in space and contains stellar bones that function inside of mm. of it, like organelles inside of an enormous amoeba. Ooh, I like this. I like crystal is. I'm always down for crystal features. Mm. Uh, maybe a nublex. Uh, that only. The only eight supermodels, I'm guessing. Mm. Look him up. Okay, we'll look. Um, what was his name? Actually, no, I don't want to. I've scrolled so far past it now. Um, forest oozes that eat leaf litter. Oh. <laughs> Make the sexiest slime possible. Yes. Uh, I already am. It's, it's amorphous. That's what you want. Oh. That's cool, York. A bioluminescent bio cave ooze. Ooh. A cave ooze, you say. Uh, 
Eva Ritchie for says, I'll start making stacks. Yeah, that's cool. Yes, Grace, please. Yeah. Want to start making suggestions That'd be for stacks absolutely wonderful. Stuff. I'd love to hear what this thing can do. Um, do I want a little face? Do I want a face on a nose? I don't think you want a face on a nose, do you? Mm, you could have a suggestion. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this drawing could be over really quickly. If you yeah, that's very true. Very basic. That is true. Is. Yeah. Right, um, okay. Talon says, I want the ooze to know all the things. Monk ooze. <laughs> Uh, yeah. na, the na, book is from Undertale. All oh, right, okay. I've never played Undertale, but yeah. it's supposed to be very good. Look. Oh yeah, it does look very like the logo, like the uh, silhouette that you just drew. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can. Moonring. Uh, Moonring asks, uh, have you seen all the tomorrow memes going around? Tomorrow memes? No. I don't even know mm. what a tomorrow meme is. No, don't let us know in the comments. Uh, is it like as in like tomorrow something is going to happen or is it like... Is there a game called tomorrow or something? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Beep and Reggie for says, what's the design going to look like? An amorphous nebula? Sort of. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm going for a kind of... That's also a good point. Uh, York says, I think it would be better if it was beautiful by its species standard rather than our own. Yes, so that's precisely that what well. I'm going for. You know what? I think I think I want to start a different way of going about this. Um, I want to... Um, oh, actually, I have an idea. I really like the idea of a news who can generate life or energy somehow, maybe has some radiant properties or can grow plants. I definitely love that idea, that's 100% staying. Um, Plasma is ooze like, right? So basically a child star. Trashy Worms is perhaps, uh, mayhaps even, some star like nebula things inside the ooze could themselves be smaller bioluminescent bio oozes. Oh, that's a nice idea. Oh, like some sort of strange high booze. That's cool. Uh, All Tomorrow is a book. Oh, nice. Uh, All Tomorrow is a sci-fi book about the future of humans in space. It's wild. Look it up. Oh, All Tomorrow is... Yes, I know this. I, I do know this. Oh. Ah, uh, right. I was reading that as have you seen All the Tomorrow memes, but it's oh, the All Tomorrow uh, memes. Sorry, that's I am I with you. That. Right. No worries. I have a new idea for this ooze. I'm sorry, I'm going to completely restart it. Um, <laughs> Bobby's like, Josh, I'm going to draw something beautiful. Also, Josh draws a long, a face on a long sleeve. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. I can pull it back. I can pull it back. I can make this, I can make this really beautiful. And that's the thing, right? You guys have got to warn me if this starts to look like it's going to be not beautiful at all. But right, okay. So my thinking is, I say, I'll. I'll you guys chat. I'll do a brief sketch and then we'll talk it through, okay? Um, I'm getting too excited because I've just had a really good idea. Uh, <laughs> um, let's do that. And then we'll get... Says, look up all tomorrow's colonials. It could be some great inspiration for this. Okay, I'll mm -hmm. look that up. Um, okay, we could have these like bits like this. Uh, what do I want to do that differently? You get quite a strange mix of things here when I lift that up. I don't know. Anyone's got a specific link? All Tomorrow's is a very peculiar uh, kind of thing. Mm. Um, right, so. Maybe make the ooze look like the alien from Annihilation. Yes, that's. Oh, yeah. That's kind of weird. Yeah, that was very cool. That was very creepy. Um, I've got an idea. I have I have a thing in my head that I'm just trying to make manifest. 
Um, oh, Dirk um, says, go for cute, like, brown soft soups, like banana slugs or caterpillars. Definitely. That's, that uh, bear still freaks me out. Yeah, the bear. Yeah, the bear in moderation is, is mm-hmm. awful. Um, I know this doesn't look very cute right now, but I promise you, I promise you it will. Uh, not cute, even. Um, beautiful. So a little bit larger. It's still got legs. So it has. Yeah, so so my right. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Right, right. I'm gonna I'm <laughs> okay, gonna do it first. Okay, I'll do it first. <coughs> sorry, sorry. Um, uh, the colonials from all tomorrows are basically sheets of human skin with eyes, mouths. And that's what I was looking at. I was confused by that. The consciousness and it can only be can only comprehend their own internal agony. It's a bit like the skin from Doctor Who mm. that's like moisturised me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's a really. Uh, I'm getting Microsoft microscopic virus vibes. Is he? Sort of. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. We're roughly, roughly close enough for me to start talking about what I want to talk about here. I'm gonna maybe make that a little bit less symmetrical. Oh, I may or may not be making some 3D models inspired by all tomorrows here soon. Oh, very cool. Um, for those that want like killer folk and stuff as miniatures. Oh, that's cat awesome. friends, is it? Nice one. Um. Uh, Joe says perhaps like a celestial ooze uh, would eat planets and drift through space and it would hide by looking like an aurora. Oh, um. that sounds very cool. <laughs> Will the next live stream be to create the most ugly monster? I think yes, that's fair. I think that's very fair indeed. Uh, you would have indulged me by, by that point. So. <laughs> really not beautiful. You better have a plan for this. I promise you I have <laughs> I have a real plan. Uh, and we'll talk it through in just a second. Once I've done a bit more kind of shaping of the silhouette. Uh, I'm thinking a bit more here. Steve says... Uh, Oozes are kind of like amoeba, right? So how about in the middle of this amoeba there's a shard of heaven or pure fey wilds or something around which this creature has formed, perhaps. That's really cool. That's a really cool idea. I like that a lot. Okay, so... Uh, Colby says, I'm getting some ideas off this drawing where the ooze is created by some ancient civilization and the... And is made from congealed arcane energy. Okay, right, okay. So, my my thinking is not a million miles away from that. Right, okay. So, I know it's bare bones right now, but I was thinking cosmic, I was thinking sort of construct, I was thinking um, arcane, right? So, what I want to do is have this thing be... It could be massive, it could be smaller. I'm not quite sure of the scale of this thing yet. But I was thinking of it being um, a bit more of a solid kind of ooze, okay? So I was planning on having, like right here, this little orb being something in the neighborhood of a black hole. And then having all this, like the main body of it, this huge amount of stuff is all this cosmic starlight ooze. It's glittery, glittery ooze. And then it has these kind of like hands and shoulders and maybe it's feet, wherever it sort of like makes contact with the earth. So these large plates of planet that are kind of like forming and crushing together with the force of gravity, that it kind of manipulates and moves around like this kind of cosmic elemental with a kind of black hole at its center. And all this ooze is kind of like forming like a huge wave around this black hole being drawn into it. And then where its feet are settling, it's bringing new life into existence. All this kind of grass and stuff is beginning to grow, all these weird alien plants. So it's kind of like a life ooze, a kind of celestial, cosmic, feyish ooze thing. Um, what do you guys think as the idea for that? Does that seem cool? Does that seem beautiful? Does that fit the brief? Okay. Uh, so this is obviously before you just gave the, your pitch there. Yeah. Uh, Colby says it looks like the Pokemon Reggie. Oh. Oh yeah, I can yeah. I can kind of get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Richard, yeah. They they have like a bunch of different. Um, they're like different golems of different persuasions, basically. Ring says maybe give it some patterns like a Van Gogh painting. Ooh, which is cool. that's a nice idea. Um, some ancient aberrations who want to gather knowledge, and they made a 
made multiple of these oozes to store it. That's cool. That's nice. Stellar ooze sounds like it could be a spell jammer to ask level threat. Yes, totally. Nice. Uh, cool, but what is it walking on though? That's a good uh, point. It's pretty of ooze. <laughs> <laughs> like, excellent. Oh, no, it's like, not, oh, yeah, I wasn't a pun, but just like ooze. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were saying people were going ooze. Ooze. <laughs> uh, your accent sounds interesting. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt here. Like it's it's not looking beautiful, but I feel like the concept. Yeah, is I beautiful. think we can make it beautiful. I within the best way that I can make things beautiful. I think this is going to be beautiful. At least I hope. Um, Colby says you could give it some of the dunamancy graviturgy Ooh, magic. Perfect. That's a great idea. Uh, which would be super cool. Yeah, uh, I love that idea. She says. That do be sounding pretty dang Nico. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure it sounds cooler, not in my accent. <laughs> uh, Jack says, great pitch though. Zachary Richard says, love it. Give it the spear of annihilation if the spear mm. of annihilation effect on that black hole. Ooh, that's a really good idea. I love that. Maybe plan. it was made by flubs. Oh, I was mm. gonna play a flub at some point. But yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next game, next game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally um, just made our new character, so we can't, yeah. <laughs> can't go running off to the next shiny one. Uh huh. As much as you tend to want to. Mm -hmm. oh, right, I'll get back in there. Okay, no worries. I'm very excited about this, guys. Thank you for indulging. That's not what I wanted to use. I wanted to use this. The sensitivity on my Wacom tablet is is not working particularly well right now. It seems to happen during live streams. I don't know if it's just a a thing where I have like a lot of stuff going on, but whenever I try and click on something, it's like it it do not want me to do that. Um, so yeah, it's very frustrating. So that line that I drew in the very centre was just me trying to reach for my um, uh, what am I calling it magnifying glass to zoom out, but um, it drew instead. So what can you do? Um, but yeah, so it's very hot here in the UK. I kind of hope that it's at least it's tolerably hot wherever you are. I'm not quite sure what that is for you. What tolerable heat is? Um, what's it like where you are? Are you also having a bit of a heat wave? Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you're having a good time in the summer, anyhow. Okay, right, let me just pick back up. Mm -hmm. um, Steve says, uh, "Yeah, the thing that the thing at the centre is the thing that defines it. Plus, not all amoeba and real life are squishy. Some of them." build or grow shells for themselves. Mm. Well, this is cool and on theme, I like it. Thank you very awesome. much. That's interesting that they grow shells. Yeah, I did not know that. Oh. P from my Jeeper says, okay, so the idea is I got to go, oops, just so, got to go, and is a stat block, is a uh, grave turgy. So Graviturgy, maybe. Oh, graviturgy, sorry. Yes, no worries. Uh, what level are the people that would fight it or interact with this? Thing. That's a really good point. So with it being cosmic, the assumption is that it's going to be quite a high level. But I think I, I think if this was like a kind of golem level threat, so you had to be prepared and you had to be decent level, um, but you're not, you know, it's not like... Um, I didn't want to make this necessarily a hugely intelligent creature. It's sort of acting on instinct as oozes tend to. Um, maybe some innate spell casting kind of goes off. Maybe, actually, like, maybe the Graviturgy magic happens as a kind of, um, like, a wild magic barbarian type thing. Maybe it has a kind of, like, um, rage type thing that goes off. Maybe every time it hits someone, you need to roll a table, and then maybe gravity stuff happens. I don't know. How uh, complex do you want this thing to be? And, um, yeah. Yeah, you guys let me know. Uh, Definitely Graviturgy magic, though. I'm liking that idea a lot. What about giving it some form of time magic as well, mm. with gravity as it can change the flow of time? Yeah, That's space time, absolutely, let's do it. Uh, Aldrin's like, I heard Myrtle, I heard her. Yeah, yeah. she's sniffing away, she's doing little doing snorts here and there. <laughs> she's very, very loud. Just be glad that you can't smell her. <laughs> yeah, uh, perhaps you could girl. take some cues from the Hedora 
uh, from Godzilla? Uh, or is that Haika? Maybe it was Ghidorah? I Ghidorah, don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I, don't know. Um, I don't know, like uh, Godzilla. We deserve a Myrtle cam. Oh, oh yeah. Do you want a little cameo from Myrtle? I can go and fetch a little Myrtle in a second. She's weak. Though, so. Okay, that's good. She's heard her name enough to want to be a part of the action. Oh, oh. Where's this girl? Oh dear. Oh my dear. Hello. Hello, pal. Oh, here she be. Oof. Big heavy girl. She says hi. I'm the same to it. I should be drawing you the whole time, huh? It's an engine of creation and destruction. Whenever it absorbs something in the sphere of annihilation, mm. it can use the absorbed material to create life or growths of stone or crystal. Ooh, that's awesome. That's yeah. a great idea. So what would this be like an entropic ooze? You know, like the forces of entropy kind of thing? Is it like a cosmic entropic ooze? It's like yeah. a force um, of nature type Steve thing. Steve seconds time and time-based magic. Cohen Lindsay is cool. Yeah, Chromati is damn cool. Um, <laughs> did you ask about the heat? Um, yes, I did. As yeah. Aldrin says, in the south it's much cooler. Um, oh, really? Uh, York says, I'm watching this shirtless, so yeah, it's damn hot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it hot is. in Scotland is unheard of. Yeah, it yeah. Is. I mean, sixteen counts is hot here, so this is like way unusual. Yeah, we're not. Um, Moonring says maybe maybe twenty level level twenty. Jack mm. says uh, CR seventeen. CR seventeen, yeah. So that's about as powerful as Strad, I think. Um, so we're going pretty destructive with this thing. You guys are picking some high numbers here. Um, which, to be fair, it's got a black hole for a face. So yeah, maybe. Zagre <laughs> says the most beautiful gruntling. Yes, she is <laughs> she a beautiful is. gruntling. That's big hamster. Mostly <laughs> <laughs> oh, little she's hamster. Girl. Yeah. She's actually. I'm, I've just looked down for the first time, and my Wacom tablet is covered in myrtle snot. Oh like she's just God. breathed slime all over my. Added her own ears. <laughs> yeah, Do exactly. You want a tissue for that? No, it's okay, don't worry. I've got a little. Oh, oh actually, no, I, I thought I had a tissue. Yes, please, if you have a. <laughs> <laughs> Something to wipe that off before I get over to that side of the keyboard. Thank you, Myrtle, for providing some actual ooze. Um, <laughs> so, hey guys, I wanted to keep you on theme. Um, but yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking the idea of this ooze. Thank you very much. I think that is also kind of the rule with oozes in D&D as well. Like the more like a kind of form and humanoid shape they get, the more deadly they tend to be. So yeah, I think that, that works quite nicely. Um, Eferma Jeeper says, I like that idea. Once on each turn it can cast a chronomancy or a grave... Um, what was that? Uh, gra gravitergy? Gravitergy. I keep reading this grave sorry. Yeah. I, was like, I mean, how often uh, does gravitergy come up gravitergy. in a normal sentence? <laughs> um, uh, or the chronomancy or gravitergy centered on itself as an area of effect spell. To which it's immune, I take it. Oh, if you wanted to draw something really beautiful, you should have drawn that. Oh. <laughs> Cosmic recycler, that's cool. Ooh, yeah, that's a cool idea. <laughs> Um, her precious porkling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's uh, now oh, chilling in my life. What if it forms from the spilled blood of gods? Ooh, oh, that's so good. If it's god's blood, cool. it could still have the basic impulse to create and destroy, but it doesn't know what it's doing or why. That's perfect. Yes. That's totally perfect. Yes, I love it. I As absolutely it should be love that. An ambulatory black hole. Myrtle is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the idea. So this is like the icor of gods uh, that has been lost to time and is trying to form. Oh man! It's like, so it's like a proto god almost. You know, it could be like what happens when a god dies, and like usually gods maybe become recycled and reform, and like get a new host to become another god, or maybe a god of the same thing. But this is like what happens when either a god is too young, or has not been able to, you know, mm. collapse in on itself and become a god. I love that. Right. What size should it be? Because it's going to be huge, right? Yeah. I, I, I now, with it being god-based, I'm thinking, like, Titanic, like, 
uh, kind of the size of a uh, Tarask or a kind of um, oh god, what are the stone like stone turtle things that are like Titanic things that you can fight? Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. They're like phoenixes, but stone turtles. So that is primordial something. You guys know what I'm talking about. You'll you'll be able to figure figure it out. But like, let me, let me read some comments and we'll see if we get that. Yeah. Uh, I've not inflicted one upon if you guys. It's blood of gods, probably Titanic or large. Maybe it's slow. Uh, within an aura, you need to make a strength check to overcome the gravity well and Ooh, walk away from it. That's a really good idea. <laughs> I don't know what this is related to, <laughs> but a sausage is just the meat inside of an animal's intestine. So when you eat a sausage, it doesn't stop being a sausage. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For that. It's the delay on this because everything yeah. you guys say is like it, you're hearing us like thirty seconds yeah. after we oh, said it. Myrtle's overheating. She's on um, my lap, but she's getting too hot because I'm generating too much heat so Myrtle's going to go back into her own bed so see you later <laughs> <laughs> oh she's far too hot you yeah. boiled her I know I'm sorry I, I run too hot as it is and she wants to stay on my lap at almost all times but she's not very good at moderating her own temperature so she doesn't know to kind of get off she'll just bark until she's <laughs> you know she's like hey I'm not happy right now but I cannot figure out why and it's spilled during the creation of a plane or reality. Like, Ooh. if the creation myth of a plane is sufficiently violent, one of these things can arise. That's oh, really that's cool. so cool. So, like, the, you could have, like, the kind of the Ragnarok of a certain mm. universe forming these uh, things. I I'm love so it. sorry for being that guy, but yeah. the Hedora is actually a separate monster from the Ghidorah. Oh, okay. It like, just sounds very similar. No, that's totally fine. I, I don't know anything about... Um, Godzilla sort of lore and all this kind of stuff I think well my brother was really into watching the um, uh, Godzilla films and stuff like that when he was younger but um, you guys it, tended to split things like he was yeah. into it you weren't into it yeah exactly we had we literally had like little meetings where we were like okay that's your superhero and that's my superhero and all this kind of stuff we divided things up as like as if the world was kind of belongings um, so if he liked Godzilla, I wasn't allowed to like Godzilla and vice versa. Um, so <laughs> he was really into Godzilla and I never really watched it. But um, the terminology is still around. I just don't know what they refer to. So uh, forgive me for not necessarily knowing. Uh, God as mimetic parasites of immense power mm -hmm. as an interesting idea to run with for a setting. Absolutely. Make him a tiny sized good boy, real Mushu energy. Oh. Um, some crazy wizard just trying to harness the leftover divinity of dead gods Ooh. for the astral plane and made this creature. That's a really nice idea. If it's a really high CR, mm -hmm. then it could be... It, is that combat rating? Yeah, challenge rating. Challenge rating. But same difference. Then it could send out little smaller raises through the vision as heralds because it's Ooh. operating with the same basic processes as a god. That's so cool. What if it has like the rule, like, you know when you chop up a uh, gelatinous cube and stuff, they divide into multiple things. Well, maybe like a, its weakness and its strength is that it's got this gravitational field and when it gets closer to those things that you've chopped off, they all kind of come back. And then, like, a huge gravitational wave goes off. So, like, you've made it easier to fight, but something really bad happens as a result of that. Mm. Um, would be a really cool feature. I like that. Um, Gabe and Gerko says that they have the same thing with their brother. Oh, really? <laughs> Is it just a brothers and sisters thing? Did you have that with your brother? Not really. We just no? fought over everything. <laughs> whether we liked it or not. If the other one liked it, then we wanted it. I see. We didn't fight, but we did. Maybe that's, that's it. You're either problem. a diplomat or... A... <laughs> <laughs> um, Zachary says just noted storm tattoo can we see it oh, um, give yeah, a flex so of the tattoo I've got a couple of tattoos I've got this one uh, was my first tattoo and I can't actually see what you can see uh, but this was I mean technically it's the platonic solids not dice but um, I thought they looked like dice and I like the way they look so I got D&D &D dice basically and then this one was by an artist called Daniel 
Sapowski, I think it was, Polish artist, who's unfortunately moved back to Poland now during the pandemic. I'm not sure if he's coming back. Um, but uh, he did a lovely deer, a lovely stag, sorry, and a crow, and this kind of orb of light here, the sun here, there's a Scottish legend. Um, there's a there's a place. Sorry, I get very distracted when I talk about stories. Um, there's where the palace and sort of the government and everything like that in Scotland is, is in Edinburgh. There's a certain location called Holly called Hollyrood Palace, um, which sounds like you're miss saying Hollywood, but it's it's Hollyrood. Holy Rood is where it comes from. Um, and there was a story about, um, I won't go on too long about it, but there was a, a story about an ancient king who, um, kind of like Bobby B out of Game of Thrones, was getting gored by this uh, this stag on a hunt. Um, and then the stag relented and uh, he could see the sunlight between the stag's antlers um, and he called it the Holy Rood, the Holy Stag. Um, so I really liked that story back when I, when I was a tour guide. I thought that was really beautiful, it was really interesting. So I asked this this artist that I really like to uh, do a tattoo of it, and he also drew really cool crows. Uh, so that was it. My plan was for every stone that I lost of weight, I was going to get him to do another animal, but he's moved back to uh, to Poland now, so I'm not sure. Maybe I'll get somebody else to do tattoos. I've got a few more tattoos, but I'm hoping to collect many uh, when uh, we go back to uh, being able to see people. You'll get a face tattoo when we reach 100k. <laughs> no, don't <laughs> promise that. I'm sorry, this we... broadcast now is legal. No, no, legal. I, I do not consent to that. I don't want a face tattoo. Well, no. Um, Hell yeah. There's, I, I would, I'd love a neck tattoo, and some of the ones around here. I just, I don't know. I can never think of what I'd get on a face. <laughs> Um, right, and then when they so just to go yeah, back, sorry, yeah. Um, when they roam the astral sea or whatever mm. the setting's proxy is, mm -hmm. and start to erode the planets they brush up against, mm. adding to themselves. That's, That's really cool. cool. It's Clifford the big red. <laughs> Clifford the big red dog is a kaiju. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, maybe those uh, rocky formations you're drawing are the scabbed blood of gods. Ooh. Ah. I, I mean, yeah, we don't know what the blood of gods looks like. So I was I was planning on it being like molten planet that's kind of like forming and coagulating around this thing. But maybe mm. the blood of gods are, you know, stellar nurseries and maybe their coagulated blood are planets in D&D. Who knows? That would be uh, very cool. So... Um, uh, York says perhaps it's something that starts large but as the fight keeps going it gets bigger and bigger and bigger yes totally Catman says Hedera is pollution and technically wins against Godzilla hmm. Ghidorah or Ghidorah was the dragon and technically always lost to Godzilla interesting um uh, basically oh I think we did jump to uh, basically they only know that, that they were supposed to exist mm -hmm. and so that's what they're trying to do by eroding other realities to go ever larger mm -hmm. all from, from the blood of gods being spilled it's amazing this is so it's cool. not malevolent on their part no. it's just reflex a byproduct of the cosmic trauma caused by their creation I absolutely and love it. well done Steve that was so badass that is really cool I'm really I'm liking this creature I'm so impressed with all the ideas you've got yeah you guys yeah. come up with such amazing Lore. People in Jeepers is they are all great ideas. They are definitely. One day we'll we'll make a giant kind of our own monster manual together, all of us, and it will be the most amazing thing. Um, I really do want to make like a little book of my own creatures, but you guys come up with so many awesome ones. I'd love to make some with you as well. Um, um massive congratulations to Apocalypt Apocalyptic Moth. Um, this is I'm I'm. 1.5 months clean from self-harm and I got hospitalised well for my addiction I'm proud of myself for my progress that's amazing amazing go you that's a hell of an achievement well done we're incredibly proud of you and that's just that's amazing go you is that apocalyptic moth you say yeah dude yeah. apocalyptic moth that's wonderful there you go thank you for sharing that with us and well done um, oh. what Patreon tier is it to get your names tattooed on your body? Oh well. Well, I actually do. You remember there was an artist that yeah. was um getting names tattooed. I paid for my friend's name to get tattooed on her. 
I've never received a photograph of it, but she did message me to say <laughs> it's somewhere obvious and she sees it every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Back when I saw that was maybe a cool thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what Patreon here would that be. But I don't know. It's not up yet. <laughs> Sam says I'm too indecisive to get a tattoo. I felt that way. Yeah, when but you get your first one. As soon as you get it done, it's like there's nothing you can really do about it. There's no point in regretting it. So yeah. it kind of. You, become decisive just by doing it I think yeah. I spent like five years thinking about a tattoo and then I got them bum 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 rapidly yeah exactly I, I was indecisive pretty much up until the day of my first tattoo and then after I had it done it's like yeah well now I want to do a bunch um, so why not you know oh, I'm liking this creature more um, and more you guys have made this so Paper My Jeepers says um, so with all that from Steve I'm thinking it's mainly graviturgy and chronomancy with wild magic table which resembles different planes of existence yeah oh that's a really good call yes I will write up this and put it on D&D Beyond as per usual and there's lots of support for Apocalypse Moth mad respect brother uh, mm-hmm. keep it up you can do it every little step is a victory I salute you boss do it genuinely your boss that's so awesome Aww. you guys are so wholesome you have the best community I really do mean that. I know it sounds very insincere coming from a YouTube person because, like, it's kind of mandatory to say things like that, but you genuinely are really lovely. And it's, yeah, it's very... makes me extremely mm. cheerful. Um, Steve's so saying, I'm writing a few short stories, basically think long, form backstories for the PCs I'll never get to play, uh-huh. as I'm an eternal DM. Yeah. And my you. dream is to write... A Right to setting. That Ooh, is really good. Cool. Lovely. Yeah, I can see you doing that, Steve. Definitely um, do that. Uh, do we think this still has ooze type, or is it something else now? I mean, there's going to be ooze to it. I'm just drawing all the kind of solid bits first that are accumulating around the ooze. We can call it something else, like a, a, a titan or a, an elemental or something like that. Um, what would it be otherwise? Maybe celestial? What's. It's a good question, actually. I thought it was simple when I started speaking, but now, now I'm in agreement with you. It could be something else. Damon Gekko says, when I get old enough, I'd love to get a tattoo because uh, I just want to put art on everything. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a good attitude for yeah. getting a tattoo. It's your body. You can own it in any capacity you feel. And uh, yeah, I feel the same way. I want to want to make my body into the kind of art that I like you know mm. you can play and frame it once you pass <laughs> away grim um, <laughs> uh, Steve oh no sorry Pete Broom and is asking uh, I missed it earlier are we running with huge or gigantuan I think gargantuan I think this is going to be a gargantuan monster. Oh, well, not monstrous. A uh, gargantuan. Or maybe it's an aberration. Mm, I don't know. Like, it's hard to define aberration because aberration is like space stuff, isn't it, really? Um, Nature type uh, doozy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like cosmic. Uh, I just realised there was ooze in that. Um, uh, Cosmic ooze celestial thing. This is where the like monster system kind of breaks down, and I, I suppose we kind of had a bit of that in um, uh, the Wisp video. We had, had a lot of people who were saying, you know, I, I treat it like a uh, a fake creature, and a lot of people saying I treat it like an undead creature. And technically, in fifth edition, a Wisp is considered an undead, but it has a lot of kind of fey connotations to it doesn't it so um, this is going to be one of those things that's like an amalgam type creature really isn't it it's like a a titanic ooze Um, Apocalyptic Moth says in my setting I classify um, most creatures spawning from the outer planes fiends and celestials just as outsiders yes that's that's a really cool thing that's like Like, kind of also a bit sinister something about like the outsiders is like yeah giant unthinkable thing I like that <laughs> yeah aberration is just otherworldly thing that is difficult to understand yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Stomach and oh, and we've got um, Bolt has joined us. I don't know if Bolt's joined us before. But hello, welcome to the stream. We're making the most beautiful thing, <laughs> <laughs> and it's very, very peculiar. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's a very conceptual. Yes. Thing. <laughs> it's going to be hard to describe, but I'm very pleased so far. Right. So. where we get a bit more of a kind of fluid nature to it. So are you picturing this in your head already? Do you know how you're tackling this? Or are you kind of just like winging it a bit? Uh, so as per usual with my drawing stuff, I tend to know pretty much everything about it before I put pen to paper. Um, so I, I'm very much kind of recreating something that I can already see in my head. Um, and I am very excited about it. Um, so I'm gonna basically do this as a kind of very cosmic part of this creature. This is gonna be the sort of slimy ooze part that is kind of flowing. And I plan to make it quite, um, actually I don't wanna do it like that. Um, I plan to make it quite sort of transparent and cosmic and um, I'm gonna do these lines in a sort of like white color and make it very sort of shiny as well. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping it will. Um, Peeper, Peeper my Duper is saying, is asking like, does it have any other type of movement other than walking? And Sam says, I say this as a joke, but it could suck at its limbs and roll around. Which is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, why not? Um, it's. it's to a titanic god oozling. Oh, yeah. in former editions, if you got larger than the largest size category, it would wrap around again and start over with macro tiny, then macro small, macro medium, and so on. No way. I've never heard that before. That's cool. <laughs> uh, you're expecting it. It doesn't even remotely resemble Handsome Squidward Elf. <laughs> I'm so sorry, yeah. The handsome Squidward Elf was clearly like the most beautiful thing I could have created. So this is the second most. Um, okay. uh, Catherine says, Aberration is like Lovecraftian and Catholic. Yeah. Like alien fairies or fairy aliens. Yes. Fralians. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, even even Myrtle snorts at that one. Yeah, she's not impressed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, right. So that's where I am with the kind of silhouette of this thing. I'm gonna get rid of my sketch layer now, and hope that that kind of works. I think actually I need to kind of bring this back round a bit and have this kind of. That maybe. Um, maybe get rid of this line. There you go. You're like saying that you like said the circle in the center is kind of like the core of a song. Yeah, totally. Mm. So that's going to be our, our kind of. Our, oh, you could do kind of like, you know, like the great wave. Ooh, that yeah, that's cute. a nice idea. Or have you just taken some of those out of those lines? Is that where you were going for? Yeah, this is what I was going to... So I'm kind of planning on that being like a little black hole and then like all of this matter and star stuff kind of like mm. orbiting around it. And so the ooze is kind of like connected to this central mass, as mm. it were. So, um, let's go for some madness. Uh, so maybe it's a legendary action where it sucks into its own gravitational pull. Creatures Ooh. within the area must t make, make a save or be stuck to it Ooh. and take damage as it rolls around. That's cool. That's cool. Maybe instead of acid, it deals like necrotic damage as this kind of like, it breaks you down into this kind of entropic nothing, basically. Alden says, you've nailed the idea of the swirling mass. 
Thank you very much. Yeah, I think the, the rolling thing was really cool. Yeah, that's a really nice like, idea. I do quite like the idea of this thing having a big orb form. Uh, yes. Where yeah. the scab slash rock slash crystal comes defensive mm. plates and it just rolls around. Absolutely, I yes. love that idea. Let's a hundred percent do that. You guys come up with such creative ideas. I absolutely love it. So this will be going up on your website? Yeah, this will go up on the website and it will go up on D&D Beyond as well. I'll probably do that tomorrow. Oh, uh, and someone was someone emailed you about yeah. uploading one of your things. So. Uh, so a few people have messaged me recently about um, well, a few different things actually, but... Um, mostly where my uh, dragons are that were on my previous website um, the yellow dragon, the orange dragon, the purple dragon and things of that nature um, I change over my website uh, to a new provider um, with the new sort of like style and things like that um, so it's taking me a bit of time to get everything up there from what used to be there um, so yeah just bear with me but they'll all get there eventually uh, what if the pieces are from different planets that's crashed you? It, mm. could, uh, it could give it a wide swath, swath of colours and things. That's a really nice idea. I like that a lot. Uh, perhaps when it's killed, its body condenses in on itself and explodes like a supernova. That's a really cool idea. That's cool. You can kind of use the um, pit fiend, I think it is, that does that. When it dies, it turns into a massive explosion. Um, but this could obviously be on, you know, stellar proportions. Does it have a little bit of all the speeds? Keepers ask me. A little bit of all speeds? What? Of all the speeds. All the speeds. All the speeds. Like movement speed oh yes yeah okay yeah I, I imagine it just kind of like rumbles towards things and then like water and stuff gets absorbed into it so there's no water to walk on and you know there's uh, maybe it's hard to breathe around this thing I'm not sure you know that kind of stuff so yeah I mean I don't want to have its movement hindered I want it to be a kind of inevitable uh, force of nature that it, if it's walking towards you it's going to keep walking towards you until there is no more towards you to walk um, and that it becomes the horizon kind of thing so that would be uh, a really fantastic way of, uh, of doing this thing If it dies, it just leaves behind the sphere, sphere of annihilation. Yes, perfect. Just like drop straight through the centre of the world. <laughs> so he says, well, I wondered how many months it would take us to design a sentient black hole. It was like I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I think we've got it. Let's just see. How's that work? Mm. It breaks you back down into star star. Yeah, perfect. Uh, let me just add a few things that I have forgotten to do. A few little lines that I missed out, I think. Um, body um i think we're okay actually with that so um, little chunks so of rock it has a walking speed and probably a flying speed but it will consume everything in its way so it doesn't stop to stop walking or flying it doesn't need to stop walking or flying cool so, yeah. yeah absolutely uh maybe with the black hole it can um do an engulf action like other oozies, but instead of being physically taken in, you're banished to a demiplane or something as if the body was a portal. Ooh, that's, that's very cool. Maybe this is what happens when too many bags of holding get together. <laughs> uh, I 
think, rather than colouring the rock now, I think I want to do this stars? No. No, I do want to do this next. I do want to do that. Uh, colours of this now. So, let's I was going to say, this is like my kind of nightmare, like one drawing on command in front of a bunch of people, but also the, those people saying, can we have some sort of star ooze <laughs> giant, make it pretty, and come up with something off the cob for yeah, that? Um, this is this is fun. Is, uh... <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. This is, this is what it's all about. Oh, perhaps you could have some Kirby Crackle and its insights. Ooh, I know you like that. I do love a bit of Kirby Crackle. I do love a bit of Kirby Crackle. Um, oh, maybe the center is a portal to a demiplane of its own chaotic creation. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Steve says, um, imagine the monk player. Can this thing be crackled? What do you think, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it has no speed, it moves everything else around it. Oh, yeah. that's cool, yeah. That's it, right? Yeah, you move towards it. Uh -huh. oh, God. I'm just trying to, like, how how could you put this in a campaign that, that anyone's going to survive? What are we talking about? What do the players need to do to survive an encounter with this? Uh, I mean, so if it's a dead god, you know, or like the remnants of a god, then I, I think players fight stuff like that, you know? That's, uh, you know, Tarasks and things, and I mean, it's it's a it's a high-level campaign, isn't it? Yeah, really? I mean, but, I don't think I've ever played anything that's got past maybe, what, six? Level, yeah, really. So that's kind of hard for me to get my head around. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can I stun it? DM if you want to try punching a black hole, you can, try. <laughs> you can give it a go, can't you? All right, let's see if I can put a little bit of oh, that's nice. Thank you, Steve. Um, uh, I hope you know, Josh, uh, how much we appreciate this stuff. I know I do. It's a great evening every time without fail. Oh, yeah. thank you so We much. really enjoy it too, actually. Yeah. We always look forward to doing these. Yeah, it's always a good laugh, and there's always weird, wonderful ideas. Oh, yeah, emphasis on weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's always absolutely wonderful. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you um, could never predict where it's gonna go. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to put the grass and stuff on there. It's too clear. I know this is meant to be adaptable for any setting, uh, but now I'm thinking um, in the Forgotten Realms, the black hole uh, would lead to limbo in the plane of chaos where all the slides are and stuff. Ooh, that's a nice idea. It's a um, very cool idea. I was just going with Sphere of Annihilation, but you guys are coming up with some cool stuff. Cool, he says, you could throw a sixth level party at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. Uh, <laughs> How would you guys sort a uh, kind of sentient so, black hole monster? Aldrin's off. This is sleep well, one and all. Good night, Aldrin. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much for being here. I think a bit more. Uh, Trashy says, I just have the party interact it from a very safe, very far distance. <laughs> yeah. Wielding their weapons with those mechanical grabby toy things, but longer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, even Greco says, I've never had the time to catch one of these before, but I'm having a blast. We're... Oh, I'm so glad. That's Thank great. you so yeah. much for being here. <laughs> Steve says, feed, return. <laughs> or is that too old? Um, let's see. I'm liking that a lot. I think if I... Hmm... I'll leave that for now. Um, Colby says, oh, what if this is, is uh, what if this is what is on the end, at the other end of a bag of devouring? Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, if you uh, cheat yeah. a bag of devouring or something. When you get the idea that it's a head and the bag of holding. Yeah. What do you think it's a bag of holding? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, something has to come out the other side, huh? Yeah, 
Um. It just shows you how flexible the system is to mm. come up with anything and apply these different concepts to it and yeah. it works. Totally, absolutely. How bizarre. Uh, York says, the Kirby Crackle would also be a nice homage to Galacticus, of which this creature is very similar so far. Oh, nice. Oh, Galactus. Galactus, maybe. Um. <laughs> Throater asks at it until it chokes on the body. <laughs> and Cobby's like, can you colour palette? Oh, thank you very much. Tika, little blobby, oh, there is my little splotch filter. Um, <laughs> oh, that's cool as well. Um, Beaker says, What if there's always two of them? The black hole in the centre of one leads to the black hole in the centre of the other. Oh, like a wormhole type thing. Oh, I love that. That's really nice. Oh, okay. What is your least favourite D&D &D monster? Mine is a gas spore. That's the pocket off. That's exactly. very fair. Um... Gas spore. I was looking at them the other day, actually, weirdly enough. Um, least favourite. Could you have redrawn some in your Monster Mondays that you haven't liked the look of before? So yeah. you've like, redone them, but like technically, from a technical perspective, what's, what's your That's least favourite? It's really hard to describe. Um, I don't know. Uh, anything that kind of like takes agency away from players, really. Um, I uh, God, that's so tough. I, nothing's like springing to mind immediately as something that I truly can't stand. Um, I'm not a really big fan. I mean, I know obviously I'm drawing this and I'm enjoying making it and, and so on, but generally speaking, I tend not to be a huge fan of uh, massive, high level monsters. Um, I like drawing dragons and I like, you know, using dragons and things like that, so that's kind of okay, but the, the kind of like. Um, I don't know, I just how often do you get to use something that's like crazy powerful so may maybe that maybe now Yorick's in his least favourite is the Yudalith oh yeah they're, they're a type of demon I've never really used them um, mm. sounds interesting yeah I suppose maybe elementals because um, if you're using just like the standard elementals there's not really much that you get to you know they're just like it's a blob of lava or it's a blob of earth or you know that kind of thing there are more refined elementals like again like the the um, uh, snail flail snail that kind of stuff is an earth elemental and that's really cool um, but it's kind of like um, other than that you know like the basic elementals in the monster manual that are not sort of further defined are a tiny bit disappointing I think uh, Coffee says I'm not generally a fan of creatures who dominate players, characters or paralyze or stun with only one save yeah that's very fair um, and C says you know what I have I think no monsters that I don't like, I do however have problems with the monster manual itself too much lower and not enough actual usable fluff yeah, that's very, very fair. Very module-centric book. Mm-hmm. That's, that's very justifiable. Flail Snail used to be an aberration in one of the few friendlier ones. Hmm. This cat one. Uh, let me just... Group. Sorry, I'm just trying to get mm. something to grip onto so I can kind of delete a few things from here um, and then I can yeah, how else do I want to do this yes 
Um, I'm going to do that. So this thing's going to destroy your entire existence, but it's going to be really fucking beautiful when it does come. Yes, exactly. Sorry. My goodness. Uh, uh -huh. Sorry. Uh -huh. Just be glad that um, we got the Myrtle Fund early. <laughs> It's okay, don't Apologies. worry. Do not worry. It's all good. Who would you think, who do you think would win a bull snail or a hydra? Ooh. I definitely think hydra. I don't think the flail snail is going to be doing much to cope with. Oh, apparently flail snails used to have their own uh, pheromone based language so they used to be relatively intelligent oh no that's sweet good for them <laughs> uh, right okay so I want to put this now behind that yes that worked okay um so now I want to do this and do this and then I want to do uh, that's not quite work with it no, my stars need to go beneath everything that's what it was excuse you there we go um, now I want to make a new layer and do uh, ooze line work color and do a little clipping mask that says Oz line work color but never mind um, you get the we can't actually see your, your oh can you not even no. better it says ooze line work color <laughs> <laughs> um, okay yay <laughs> I had a flail snail genasi one time, which made all of the players ask, Chloe, why do you do this? And <laughs> how were they born? <laughs> <laughs> What's the weirdest combination of class and race that you've ever played, guys? Let us know. Yeah, I definitely want to hear that. I think I'm becoming one of those like boring people that's just like, oh, I play no. a human, I play a human, I play a variation of a human. <laughs> no, definitely not. I think you play some very peculiar characters. What's the weirdest combo you've had? Uh, of, um, at the table or that I've played that you've played um, I don't I tend, I just I'm so addicted to playing elves I can't resist mm. them you know um, I just love them so much uh, what was I doing here oh yeah um, now I want to do a little yeah I, I'm Oh. I'm getting the chance to be a player for the first time in a while actually and I'm really enjoying it um, but it's, it sure is strange uh, I like that. I can see that. sorry I haven't actually talked about that you yeah. being a player again after how long oh, I suppose it's only a few years since Joe's game yeah, two years true. or something but still you haven't been a player in a long time yeah uh, I'm playing a cat sorcerer right now, not a tabaxi. That's also Kobe, just a cat. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellently done. Really born a cat, the really cursed to become a cat. <laughs> a Goliath tiefling subrace. Ah, yes. That's Ace. Yeah, that's. Um, I keep getting mixed up with your your name and who you are, and uh, now I remember. Um, one of my patrons. Um, ah. Okay, yeah. Um, accretion disc around. Asimar Illusion Wizard has been fun. That does sound that sounds really nice actually. Uh, one of my players has been playing a Tiefling Ranger. That's probably the, that's probably the strangest race class I've ever dealt with. Tiefling Ranger. Yeah, you think that that would be very naturally as it is. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Do you guys tend to pick races and classes that work together, or do you just go with what works with the sort of story and character that you're building? 
I don't think I've ever really tried to be like, oh, this one has charisma, so I'll be <laughs> Yeah, I think it's better yeah. to, to make a, you know, make a thing, isn't it? Make your own... Um, Gaming Gecko says, same with my World of Warcraft characters. I just tried to pick a race that in my mind thematically suits the class. Alright, okay, yeah. Halfling Barbarian Ahmed Bakuli is so far my best. Um, I like non optimized stuff that feels set in neutral. Mm -hmm. I have in my unused PC roster a Goliath Druid, for example. I don't mind hamstringing myself for story purposes yet. Excellent, that's a good goal. I'm totally there with you. Oh, uh, Asus, it's Nico. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, Jack says it's starting to look pretty nice. Thank you very much. Uh, Kobe says there's a civilization of sentient cats on the moon of the setting. An oh. idea that was entirely my contribution and by far the weirdest part of the setting. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I've tried to encourage my players to play and convince one to play a dolphin. So that was a tra in Traveller, not D&D, says Kavma. Right. Now that Tasha's cauldron lets you reassign the stats of every race, you can pick whoever you want. Yeah, yeah totally. some glow around that I think uh, let's go for a lizard folk alchemist who keeps an odd gadget for anything unusual hmm. I like the sound of that a lot I think sometimes I subconsciously try to make semi-optimal characters but I honestly don't have large sample size of PC for me since I'm usually the DM so Sam. Yeah. yeah, very fair. That's very fair. Um, I think that's a, a semi-traditional story, I guess. We, we feel the same way. Um, it's hard to... Um, it's just hard to make yourself um, make an optimised character when like the story beckons, you know? Um, you want to make whatever's coming into your head and whatever mm. would be like a fun story yeah so the DM um, that's running a campaign for us now Greg he wanted to hear what our characters were first and then build a world around it yeah so very I brave with a a circle of the spores druid mm -hmm. so there's quite a lot of mushroomy vibes going on in it <laughs> now which is quite cool so yeah, it's definitely. kind of nice that it's, the characters are kind of shaping the yeah. world it's very interesting he's, uh, he's more of a sort of improv DM than I am and it's really interesting to see Uh, Jack says that yellow of the ring might look better than that orange from your palette of circles. Absolutely, I'll give that a go. In just a sec. Damon Geckle says I've only played a bugbear barbarian and a homebrew vampire hum blood hunter. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's not very nice. Um, I was kind of confused about what bugbears are. Is it kind of like a goblin? Yeah, so they're kind of um, a. They're part. They're goblinoid, so they are of the goblin kind of species, I guess, as it were. Um, but they're also um, kind of hairy, aren't they? Yeah, like they're, they're often treated like kind of cat creatures. Um, so mm, okay, you know, it's a bit peculiar. Um, there. Hey, Goldie says, I also have a fairy primeval guardian ranger from the UA. The main feature lets you get size large, so I have a character that can become 16 feet tall and still fit through, fit through one inch of spaces. That's oh, wow. very cool. That's awesome. Um, yes, he says, big hairy lads. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it very fluffy. I don't know. I, I, I liked my kind of uh, I, I kind of treat um, bugbears as looking a bit like a grim version of uh, the beast from Beauty and the Beast. Um, um, but obviously, 
uh, they don't need to be that. That's just my bit of flavor. Ooh, it's getting very hot in here now. <laughs> Hertz is one thing I like about the goblinoids is that the bigger they get, the smaller their noses are. Oh, really? Oh. I didn't know that. Uh, Cabman said, I was thinking of making some heads for miniature conversions of those that want to make bugbears. Uh, would be able to be worked with my orc and gorilla bits in my thinning earth. Oh, it's a UFD printer. That's really cool. I'm not sure if they are. Feel free to drop a link if you Yeah, got... I'd love to see. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can link stuff, but you can. I think there's like. You can type it out, space it out, yeah, or yeah. piece it together. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty much what I would do to that. I don't know uh, how you feel about that. Do you want to give it a minute and see yeah. what the feedback see on what, that yeah, is? Yeah, people's sort of ideas after this ooze. Um, Steve Harrison says the York bar the nose is the same, but they just go to meet it. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. That's a good idea. Uh, Game and Gekko says your druid video, video encouraged me to try a druid in my friend's upcoming mini campaign. Lovely. Um, what kind of druid are you going for? <laughs> Cannon goblinoids only have one type of nose. Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let us know about your druid. I'd love to hear that. I still think that yellow could... Oh yeah, yeah, I do need to change that. that. Yes, I'll definitely do that. Give me two seconds while I make the uh, background texture. You could draw a tiny little one next to it. <laughs> I'll just copy and paste the whole thing. <laughs> you could draw a little... Humanoid creature for scale, just like a little dot. There you go. Oh. There's Bob. There's Nigel, the soon to be crushed. Um, and York wants to know which one is your favourite lesser known dinosaur. Favourite lesser known dinosaur? Um, I actually get confused now with like what is and what isn't a dinosaur at this point. Um, prehistoric animals, I guess. Uh, I don't know, I quite like a spinosaur. Um, I mean, I actually know they're pretty well known. Um, I don't know, so like my favourite right now, they're not dinosaurs, but they're prehistoric animals, maybe that counts. Um, I really like the Gorgonopsids. Um, I think they're a really fascinating thing. I put them in D&D &D a lot. Um, just something about like saber-toothed sort of mammal, sort of reptile precursor creatures. Just do it for me. I like them. Um, Jack's got a quite good suggestion here. Um, mm. Rotate the black hole to be a bit more off-kilter, add more mm. chaotic energy to it because it's a little bit too perfect. That's a good call. I will yeah, definitely I like do that. that one. Just Give me two minutes. A bit of kind of feeling like it's everything is revolving around it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Do you have a favourite plant? Do I have a favourite plant? Again, I, I, I like lavender. I'm a big sort of lavender yeah, fan. Yeah, um, um, Very much. <laughs> Steve Harrison says, let's make something beautiful. Community votes is doubt intensified. One hour passes. Man, that thing's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're a very strange community. Jijan. So, sorry, this is my favourite. That sounds really dark, but I'll believe you. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, so, is that. Oh, Gaming Geckles uh, is in the a wood elf. Circle of Forest Druid. Hmm. I was going to do a fur bog um, on a satyr, 
because I was inspired by Pan's lab, Labyrinth. Oh, yeah. I had to play them on D&D, pay for them on D&D Beyond. So I made a cursed fawn like wood elf. That's when Jeepers Nice. Wrote. That sounds very cool. <laughs> Paper My Jeeper says, I went out to get a burrito and came back to this. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. It's going to look very pretty soon. Madagascar, La Madagascar Lambs Plant is Moon Rings Fair. I'm going to look that up. Just yeah. But always find weird and wonderful things. Oh, was it like it's an underwater one? Oh, lovely. Oh, lace plant, not lambs. Yeah, lovely. So I'm trying to use a smudge tool here, and it's it's basically having a small Photoshop equivalent of a heart attack uh, while I'm trying to blend all these textures. <laughs> Exquisitely destructive cities. Yeah. Yeah, you can imagine it like crying both because your world has been destroyed, but also just at the sheer beauty of how it went out. That's how yeah. I think there's like a scene in Doctor Who where they watch the death of Earth oh, from yeah. the TARDIS. Yeah, it's, it's like the of... first sort of date between Rose and. Uh, mm. I think. I'm not sure. I just remember the scene, I don't really remember the context. Are there any old D&D &D races you would like in 5e? Oh, and also we need to come up with a name for this creature. That's very true, yeah, we do. Thank you um, both. Are we, are we, how have totally we not distracted. started on that? Yeah, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> um, my god. Uh, yeah, I I Corus. Now someone so in terms of like uh, old old races, there's not many that I. It, I think we're kind of like oversaturated with with, with species and races and stuff now. Bolt, hang on, sorry, Bolt's sorry. not very good. Have you saved recently? Because <laughs> there's a circle of death is on your screen from what we see right now. Very true. Very good call. Okay, save yeah. So I, I am trying to do too many things. It it won't let me save right now because uh, it has the little circle. Oh dear! What if you're right? <laughs> Excuse you, Myrtle? What's she, what's she she's, eating? She's just lying with her head back off of her bed. See, see, so? Dear, dear. Good call, good call. Yes. Uh, it was like the Star Destroyer. <laughs> the Void Maw. Oh. That might be a Warcraft thing, though. Don't want to just plain mm. use Warcraft names. But oh, well, let's get case. a few suggestions and then we could do a poll. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Coagulated God Gravity. <laughs> <laughs> CGD. Um, have you got other stuff running that you don't need to have running? No, this is, this is just there. This is the YouTube screen filming and. Yeah, this is just kind of what the smudge brush is like for me anyway. This is why I don't use it. Mm, okay. Um, mm. It's alright, it gives us some time to chat yeah. and to plan. <laughs> I just get nervous when I see that circle. I know, I know, don't worry, it's, it's doing it's a big smudge. It's work in an office at about 30 computers, mm -hmm. and I don't know why or how, I've never heard of it ever since, but if someone's computer crashed the way they were linked, mm -hmm. each one in turn would then crash. So oh, you no get way. a call from someone at one side of the office being like, it's crashing, save! And we all be like, <laughs> save, save, save! <laughs> oh! Myrtle knows the panic. Yeah. <laughs> Holy ho, God, Blood, Coagulant, how about Henry, the End Maw, Neb, the Plain Strider, Star Eater, Ooze, Henry the Hole, yes. Coagulant. It's quite like the Star Eater. Blob Boy. <laughs> Just blob boy. Just blob boy. Just blob boy. Star Eater is. Yeah. Star oh, do you know what that was? I knocked the table when I was talking there. Myrtle closed uh, the door. She's away downstairs. Right, okay. She's gone to check out in case we have some intruders who would knock, apparently. Consumptive, coagulant, the fall, Icarspong, oh. from the name of Greeks, God's Blood. Yeah, yeah. That's I was thinking of Icar cool. for sure. Is the front door open? Yeah, oh. she's just gone for a run. She's away to bark at nothing. 
Right. Okay. Okay. After this. Chronovore. Ooh, chronovore. That's you fall cool. as you fall forever into black holes. Mm. That's cool. Mm. Oh my god, is it still circling of death? It's alright, it's just finished on my screen at least. Oh. Saving, just saving. Void bore. Yeah, I like that. The remnant. That's cool. The remnant's very cool. Uh, Zachary, like Zachary says, I'm a work from home guy. These live streams mean a lot to me. Mondays suck at my job. I really mm. look forward to these thanks for all the hard work. Well, thank you. Oh. I look forward to them as well. It's wonderful to be here. Star Ifer, uh, Paper My Keeper is seconding, seconding, um, no, <laughs> seconding, <laughs> sorry, um, uh, the Chronovore. Excellent, I like it. Uh, oh, all right, thanks for joining us, Apocalypse Math. Hope it, hope it goes well for you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, another vote for Chronovore, Mr. Munch, the Nothing Eater. Ooh, I like that. Uh, I don't. It's kind of cutting out at that point. That's not fun. Maybe if I did like that, and then that would be opacity. But the, intro the entropic hunger. The entropic hunger is very nice. Changing the colour of this uh, black hole. There'll thing. always be Henry in my heart. Yeah, I would like to point out that Chronovore appears in the All Star Superman. Okay, let's uh, not use Chronovore then. It has both time and gravity. Uh, did we say uh, time magic? Yes, I think we did say it was Chrono. Mancy and and geomancy, I believe. No, it's no. Uh, Gravit. Graviturgy. Graviturgy. That's. Going <laughs> for uh, is out. It's trademarked. So uh, okay. Um, it could take multiple names, one official, and multiple titles or whispered extras. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. What about Chrono Ender? That's cool. Oh, that's nice. Probably like the outsider or something. That was quite cool. Yeah. Too. That has a this singular singularator. Time is. is. Time is. Mega is. It has gravity, chronomancy, and wild magic thematic to the planes of existence. Yeah, that's a nice recap. The dance. That's I me. Think it's the fall. Yeah. You're gonna give that planet a little. Oh yeah, yeah. That's on a separate layer that you can it do. It is, yeah. I just nice, need to group nice two things together. Work. Thank you very much. Uh, let's just put these together. Uh, Star Eater Ooze is the most direct thing to name it. Uh, Somavor. Uh, okay, this is eclectic, as in all get it. But Soma is the building block of the universe in the old Gnostic religion is related to what God's, God supposedly made the world from might be too niche. Hmm. That sounds cool. That's cool though. So, so much more. So much more. Yeah. I like the idea of it. Very cool. I like this guy. Uh, thing. Person. Who's. <laughs> I'm not super liking the background though. There's like, so there's a lot of this kind of needs to be like like that, I like that, but it, it drifts off into this weird thing. I wonder if um, I sort of toned that down a tiny bit, and then and maybe if I tone this down a tiny bit, uh, it's not quite working for me. Um, 
sorry for the, the trippiness, is when I go through all the layers and it's sort of, uh, ooh, that's pretty nice. What have we got there? Quite like that, with a bit of black in the background. What if I were to do like that and then do, oh no, actually that's the wrong thing. Um, I'm do blending change and then I change this to that. Oh, that's really empty. And then I change that to one of these. Oh, I can't oh uh, well, this is entropic alluvium. Uh, alluvium is a synonym for an ooze, apparently. Oh, that's Black star ooze. That's pretty nice. Clay meter ooze. Black star alluvium. Alluvium? I'm going with that. I'm going with alluvium. Cosmovore. Cosmovore. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Bit. Let's go a bit of that. And then we can that's feeling a lot more like it. Um yeah, I like that. I like that creature. Um just a question for folks, just in terms of doing polls and stuff so mm -hmm. that Maybe I can run it so that Josh doesn't need to jump back and forth. Do you guys use Instagram? And it would be would it be a good way to do it in an Instagram story, mm. or is that something that yeah, would just okay. actually be annoying to say? It's kind of flop back yeah, and forth. Yeah, to move yeah. between them. Yeah, I get you. Uh, right. Now I'm wondering if that ooze is oozy enough. Does it need to be one particular thing? No, I suppose not actually. Well, if you took the lime layer off of that, would it work or would it look strange? It might look a little bit weird. Let me just have a look. Who's lime work? Or you could maybe blur it slightly so it's not so. Bad, actually. Um, do you know what I do? Uh, I Lawrence Fishburn. Fishburn. I'm not, why I'm not sure Fishburne. of that, but it's been seconded. <laughs> okay. Gravity Elemental. Uh, Ooh, that works. Yeah, Instagram stories working for a few people. Okay. Uh, Galacticus without his suit. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. Somebody get this thing some turkey suit because it's straight up sick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, oh, see, so I have Insta solely because of this channel. Oh. Cool. All right. Well, I can always put a link in that. Or if you have a poll app on the Discord for future streams, you could have the patrons vote there. That's true. That's also true. We'll set something up for next time. Um, yeah. Lots of yeah. people are loving it. Excellent. I'm so glad. Uh, yeah, we do need to name this thing. Um, and I keep getting distracted because it's like, mm. oh, there's cool things I can do. Um, and I'm getting very excited oh, about adding to Lawrence it. Lawrence Fishburne. Starred in the movie Event Horizon. Uh, okay, right. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm with you. I was like, why are we talking about Lawrence Fishburne <laughs> right now? Uh, no. Uh, uh, name it Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'd appreciate that somehow. Um, let's do a bit of that. I, I can I can leave it there. I'm satisfied with that. Right. So, um, names wise, oh, we've got loads of cool abilities for it. Um, do you want me to make a poll and sort of like yeah, go for some names? Yeah. So you, you, you shortlist them 
then we can get folks to vote on it. Yeah, okay, so uh, we ha- Oh my god, I can see how quickly the thing's moving. Good lord. So, uh, the, the comments are just like. <laughs> I just saw. Um, That's why I okay. wave at you, like, I need to see. Oh, oh right, sorry. okay, I had no idea. <laughs> um, wow. Um, okay, okay, so uh, name this creature. Um, and we will have, let's say, um, uh, uh, the. It wasn't like Omnivore, was it? The. the uh, oh, my God. Horizon Juggernaut's pretty damn cool. Uh, Gravital. Um, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Like, let's not put Lawrence Fishburne or Henry the Hope down because we'll end up. Yeah. That will be Cosmovore, that's what yeah, it was. Cosmovore. Um, Black Star Ooze. Yeah. Um, um, Entropic Alluvium, which I can spell out for you if you want. Uh, what was that one, sorry? Entropic Alluvium. How do you spell Alluvium? A L L U V I U M. I U M. Solmovore. Did we say that? Yeah. Oh, I quite like that one. That's all we you can only do like four. Oh, items. is that all you can do? Yeah. Let's do that. Okay, that seems like a good, uh, good list there. I think that's pretty beautiful. That's pretty nice. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna vote. <laughs> Go for it. Um, very cool. It's beautiful. It's destructive. <laughs> Nicola is destroying those, and um, says, "Sorry, this thing is supposed to be beautiful. It's a long story, okay." Yeah. We got there. It's got a whole beautiful background, backstory, yeah. like yeah, you missed some stuff, man. Conceptually beautiful, yeah. <laughs> also super sinister, yes. <laughs> yeah, York says it is in our own way. Yes, <laughs> in its own way. it's what our community deems beautiful. <laughs> Young wanted the news. He got a news. That's pretty nice. Hmm. Okay, hang on here, hang on here. I've got to do some duplications of stuff. Right, uh, layer, uh, duplicate layer. Did you save? I will save right now. Um, okay. Because I really like the way that looked a second ago. Oh, yeah, the very translucent one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to do a bit of that and then I'm going to put the other layer underneath it but really really uh sort of not desaturated what's it called low opacity there's beauty and wonder in the power of the cosmos nice look at Catherine. thank you very much was that over there or was it <laughs> Wait, i'm back once again to campaign for entropic alluvium yes entropic alluvium's in there for sure um we're gonna do a bit of this Winning at the moment, forty-seven percent. If that is up to date on mine, I think so. I haven't checked actually. Sorry, I get very distracted, and then it's very hard to like concentrate on on replies. Um, but I will do my best. <laughs> Coffee's now offering two hundred dollars per vote, <laughs> <laughs> and can definitely we... pay this time. <laughs> <laughs> We've been burned before, Colby. Um If I do, what is that I need to do to make this thing look transparent? If I do uh, layer, new layer. I think the background layer should be something more yeah. harmonious rather than the red. Well, the red does say apocalypse. Yeah, that's right. It's fair. not sitting, I yeah. think, as well on the color palette. Okay, no worries. Uh, merge layers. Um, and then we can do saturation. Oh, green, it's quite nice. Mm-hmm. 
Ooh, that's lovely. to see but that does look very nice um, why don't I do that and then is that still visible at all why is that not at all visible Hmm. What do you think this is tastes like? I mean, I feel like you've been dead long before you would figure that out, but... I think it tastes, um... Why is it gone? Well, I mean, tasting Eichel will kill you, apparently, according to the ancient Greeks and ancient Romans. But um, I think it would just taste like, oh, like popping candy, it like dropped into jelly. Like, like really, really flavorful, like grape jelly that's got like popping candy inside. All right. That's where I'm at with that. <laughs> yeah, someone says grape, yeah. yeah. Ice cream sodas. Okay, you sort of going a lot nicer than... What do you think it tastes like? Like, like the smell of death. Oh God. What is it? It's like destruction and decay and... This is entropy and like rebirth. You know, no need to go super dark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just little jelly boy. Okay, okay. It's mystery flavoured. Yes, it is. I think I'm more, more bitter than sour, a bit metallic maybe, mm. raspberry. <laughs> Space is supposed to smell metallic. Is it? Apparently. Mm. I can't tell the difference between bitter and sour as well. <laughs> I have no <laughs> guess. <laughs> <laughs> Instant death flavour, yeah, Steve's on board with me. Yeah. Try and put some extra texture in this thing because I like the way the background's looking now, mm -hmm. but now <laughs> the jelly itself is so transparent, it's gone too far the other way. Right, right. Um, so, I want to make sure that we get some. So, it looks like entropic alluvium has won out at 45%. I like the sound of that. I think Part it's a really good. Winner, well done, Bobby. We'll be expecting that two hundred pounds. Yeah. I can imagine a wizard trying to bottle some of this thing for potions. Yeah, mm. really, really brave wizards. Yeah, definitely. Um, blah, blah, blah. This is why I tend not to do so many transparent things. Mm. Uh, it's very cool. I'm really enjoying it, but it is really hard uh, to quite get right. Um, so I want to multiply, do I want to multiply that? Oh god, that looks so cool. That's Space, just... according to some reports, smells rather surprisingly like primroses. Hmm. According to an old episode of QI, I probably misremembered anyway. <laughs> That's where all my facts come from. Oh, I like the white kind of glow. No, stop getting distracted. Um, just make a tangible enough looking slimy thing. Oh, that looks so cool. I really like it. Okay, okay, right, we'll do, do that. And then I will duplicate our layer. 
<laughs> in found in the blending mode I am, I am. I'm trying. I'll stop here ish. Um, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I, you can you can see what that is. I think I think the. Uh... What does it eat? It eats well. Does it eat planets? It can. It sort of absorbs planets. Yeah. Um, and kind of creates new ones. Yeah. From parts. Is that what we're going with? Yeah, I think so. Okay, right. I have to stop there, otherwise I'm going to keep going forever and ever. Um, is it legible enough? <laughs> Let me see what your final one looks like. It needs like a bit of definition. Though. I think that was cool. I yeah. think that's cool, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. You saved me from myself. Uh, <laughs> unless I wanted one, one thing, maybe. Uh, I can. I will stop after this. I swear, I will stop after this. Uh, it's it's so easy to get obsessed with uh, with line works and, and 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 layers. This is this is this is why I stick to one particular uh, kind of way of doing things because uh, it's just the minute you start painting, it just you can you can build so many layers forever and ever. Kind of reminds me of Bubble Man from SpongeBob. I don't think I've yeah. met that character. He's you, Bubble Man. Have you not? You've not met Bubble Man. He's only in one episode. Oh. Oh. He's best friend of Bubble. Um. And I just keep seeing the same episodes, like the same like five episodes of SpongeBob over and over. Very fair. Yeah, it's like you were finished. This looks suspiciously like you're still drawing. No, I'm, no. Nearly, I'm uh, just tweaking, just tweaking something. Okay, right. I'll I'll leave it there. I swear. Right. Okay. That's 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 it. That's it. Done. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tweak it any further. That's that's it. Done. <laughs> I can't see the final result yet. It's still changing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that, okay. That's Slightly good. more defined. Uh, it looks looks done. That's it. Done. That's it. Um, uh, I can stop anytime I like. <laughs> so that will be the entropic alluvium. I I like the sound of that name, um, and I like the idea of the creature. I'll go through what we talked about. I'll watch the video when it's sort of finished processing and things like that and I will um, uh, figure out all the powers and abilities that it had and I'll stick it up on D&D Beyond um, and on my website and things like that. I'll make sure to make a post on the uh, YouTube sort of uh, community page and on my social media when I've done that. It'll probably be a couple of days because uh, I've got some recording to do for some future videos. I'm, I'm kind of a little bit behind after I took a week off, so playing a little bit of catch up, um, and uh, yes, but I'll try and prioritise it as soon as I can. Um, and thank you for helping me to make something really beautiful in a terrifying kind of way, but I still think that's beautiful. I would still find that beautiful, even if it was lumbering around the horizon um, and destroying everything just simply by existing. Um, a sort of, you know, uh, horrific... Uh, Jelly Man of Doom. I really like it. So thank you so much for all of your suggestions and for being here. And um, uh, again, congratulations, Apocalyptic Moth. Well done um, on uh, on your recovery and for uh, joining us and for sharing that with us. And uh, thank you all for your support and your help and for watching the channel and helping me to do what I do. So yeah. Uh, until I see you next time, which will be this coming Monday. I think that's the next time I'm doing a video. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your uh, July and I'll see you in August. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.